Hello, this is Blueberry for PokerVIP.com. In this Ink Finder and Session Review, I'm going to watch PLO5 Zoom game from Madusko, and let's see what we can find in that one. As you can see, the HUD is not working, and this is something that I talk about in my HUD video. Madusko said that you don't need HUD necessarily in PLO5, um, I disagree. There's a lot of things that HUD can help you, especially in Zoom, where the average player is quite tight. But let's move on and let's see what happens. I'm going to post the video when we have something interesting. Uh, on the left, we have Pocket Kings, which I think we can complete. Um, Although playing crappy things out of position is quite hard, but we are in the bit blind, so we get a discount and there's dead money from the small blind. Yes, this is a call, although we are out of position. But in PLO5, people often give a lot of value if we hit, and most of the players play straightforward post flop. But on this flop, my standard line is check call once. It's really exploitable if the opponent is good, but in PLO5, I wouldn't be too worried that the opponent exploit me if my check calling range is weighted towards wheel trips and over pairs. But, Magisco folds. I'm not sure. If you fold Pocket Kings on there, then. Are you going to fold every time when you don't hit the flush draw or pocket kings? Because if you play only for the set value, then the preflop call is not profitable. So I, I think you can call the ones. If the opponent doesn't have trips, he's going to shut down. Um, on the left, in zoom, I would have just folded this hand. This is where the HUD is really useful. We, if we know the VPIP of the opponent, we can estimate if he's tight one or loose one. And tight ones fold, a lot of big blinds, loose ones rarely folds. If he's a good regular, he probably shouldn't fold much. So I wouldn't steal here unless I have good hand or the opponent is tight one. Here the hand is pretty mediocre, no information on the opponent. I would probably just pass it, but this is where the heart is really useful. On the right, pocket tens, king high flush draw. You can open from the button a lot of hands in the zoom. And here, this is sort of standard check back. We have cut shot, king high flush draw, pocket tens for some showdown value. Uh, the only problem in check back is we tell our opponent that we didn't hit the board hard, which means that most of the opponents in modern PLO is going to bet any turn. So if the turn is really blank, then we have to give up. That's why I often decide C betting in heads up board is better, especially on ace high boards. We get so much folding equity. If he has a weak ace, he's going to crawl. We still have a lot of equity, and if he raises, then it's one of those rare situations that he actually have a really strong hand. I talk about this in my video about C betting in heads up bots. Like now, he just gives up. Turn is great card for him to bet, and he bet smallish. <laughs> and Madusko just have to fold. So instead of giving up those bots, why not make a C bet? He might fold, and you just win the bot. On the left, um, if you want to make money in PLO5, then you have to be able to make thin value bets. And here, Marusko has top pair, over pair, and back to a flush draw. Uh, I think you can see bet for value. Um, in PLO5, especially PLO5 soon, people don't raise as often with bluffs as they would do at some higher stakes. Like here, most of the opponents, if they have a draw, they are just going to call. They will call you with any jack, any nine, probably in PLO5, any six. Cut shots, open-enders. Uh, 
You can bet the flop, then see on the turn if you want to check back and they have the free river, but once again, if you check the flop, then opponent might bet any turn, he should bet any turn, probably fire a lot of rivers if he's a good player, but most of the opponents know that when you check the flop, you have some kind of a weak hand or totally missed it. So now if he bets, then you have to crawl from the button and it creates quite nasty river situations. And opponent bets, river is small, and now comes something weird. Now the question is, what do Madrigal represent here? He shouldn't have a check nine, shouldn't have a set, deuce is totally blank. This race just doesn't make sense. It doesn't represent anything. Of course, the opponent might be bad, but here he's risking 35 cents to win 30 cents. So he has to be right over half of the time. So I, I wouldn't race. I, I would just crawl and see the river. An opponent crawls, so... Now when opponent crawls, we have to think about his range. His range are most likely some check nine type of hands. His range is all kind of straight draws. It might be over pairs. Now, when Madrisco bets here, boom, is this a bluff or is this a value bet? That's the first question. And honestly, I don't know, but it doesn't really work in either way. If it's a bluff, what better hand is going to fold? None. If it's a value bet, what worse hand is going to crawl? Really, really thin value bet. Maybe check nine if the opponent doesn't understand that pair of deuces kill his hand or pocket queens, but that's about it. So I, I don't think this bet achieves anything. It's kind of waste of money. Yeah, opponent folds. Now, when opponent folds and Madrisco might think that it was a good bet he folded, the thing is that if you check you're still going to beat all of his folding range. So you win the same amount by checking, but you don't risk 75 cents, which is 13 BBs. A nice hand on right. Ooh. Uh, almost nice hand. It has a six. I thought this was a queen. Sorry, my bad. Uh, Ace king, six then. Ace king suited. Yes, this is a fold from under the gun. It was my missing one, sorry. Uh, when you have ace king of same suit, it hurts your hand in PLO, and six is totally useless. So it's three card hand where you block one of the outs that give you value if you have an ace high flush. So it's clear forward. <laughs> King to queen seven from the cutoff, definitely open. Um, I often use a rule of thumb that you can play three card hands from cutoff and button. Like this is a three card hand, seven is useless. You have a king queen jack with one suit. So it's three card hand, play those from cutoff and button. And flop is pretty nice. Top pair, open ender, C bet. Uh, open and raise is now comes the fun part in PLO and poker. You can do mathematics. You have to pay 64 cents in the pot of 2.14. So you get some equity. First, you have to check what is his range. Then you have to see what is your equity versus that range and so on and so on. As general in PLO 5, in PLO 10, when people raise, it's often for value. When they bet, they can easily be bluffing, but people don't raise when they are bluffing that often. So I would assume that this is often Jack 10 or a set. So Hero has eight outs versus set, which gives us a chance of around 17 or 18 percent to hit the turn, which means that to call this bet, he has to win over three and a half, almost four dollars, which becomes quite impossible. So in short, he cannot call this with just an open ender. The only reason for calling is that opponent is raising with a lot of bluffs. Well, then I don't know if calling is the best option either. But in my mind, this is clear fold. But hero called. Lucky him. 
made his straight. The thing is that he's going to hit the straight one out of five and a half times, one out of five times. So to crawl 64 cents, he has to win like three and a half dollars totally, which means that now he has to get around one and a half dollars as implied odds. And the problem is that if opponent has a set and hero bets spot here and opponent calls, he still has 24% equity, which means that his equity share is going to be like 50 cents here. So even if hero bots and opponent calls, the value is $1.5, which is what is needed for break even. So this is the problem that even mathematically it's really hard for hero to make profit unless the opponent calls the river with the set. But who knows? On the right, there's a trips. Uh, let's see what is hero's line. When flopping trips, is it check call or check raise? Oh, opponent made it easy and shoved, so now it become profitable. And he has pocket aces. Boom. Yeah, that's unlucky. But I, I think hero made a problem here. Uh, I mean, sorry, the villain made a problem by betting the turn. Which means that ace just hits every part of hero's calling range. Now on the right, flop goes. Check, check, so now Hero has to bet. That's the problem playing out of position. And yeah, now you can bet bigger. Open and fold it. <laughs> Top pair, cut shot. I'm here on the right. Once again, Hero open from the small blind. With kind of hand, and unless he hit the set of jacks, it's really hard to hit the board, so he has to be bluffing. Of course, this is one of the best flops that you might get some folding equity. Let's see, an open and fold, so it works this time. But, um, this is where HUD is so useful. You can steal from the players that you know it's profitable instead of hoping it's to be profitable. From the bottom, it's totally different because now Hero has the position. But heads up, but out of position, it's the worst place to be in PLO. Here on the left, I think you can fold these really, really small rundowns. Uh, if you crawl, you might create domino effect, which means that everyone behind you is going to crawl, and this hand is just garbage in multiway pot. If it was any higher, then 3-bet or crawling is fine option, but here, this is just going to flop problems. And then we have a rundown. Now this is a much better rundown. When there's UTG open and your call, three betting is bad option because you don't have a lot of phone inequity versus either one of these. So just call, see the flop. When you miss it, give up. And now on the right, I think this flop can be stabbed because no one should have a king here. But just giving up is standard line. Just the thought that when the flop is king, king then and everyone checks, there's a huge chance that no, none has the king. Um, Hero is opening a lot of buttons. It's nice. Especially in Zoom, people often fold the blinds. A small blind has auto folded. And here, Hero has top two, and opponent keeps betting. Um, I, I would call here. If you call the flop and turn, then I would call the river, because if you call the flop and turn, you have to put your opponent to a bluff. And on the river, the missed flush draw, can't even bet, because the opponent bet size looks like he wants to 3 barrel. He bet small on flop and turn to save up the ammunition for the river. Uh, if he had a really strong hand, I think he would have bet so much that he can shove the turn. But if you call flop and turn and then give up on the river, I, I would say that give up on the turn already. If you don't think your opponent is bluffing. I'm here, 3 betting with this rainbow hand, I, I would have just called. Hand has potential, but when it's rainbow, 
it really hurts the hand. Now the flop is really nice for three betting. You should get two folds almost always unless someone has an ace and doesn't believe in yours. If there was even one suit, then three betting is, is fine. Um, ace then queen four double suit. I think you can call from the blinds and defend. Don't three bet it, but you can just call, create a three or four way pot. Um, I think hero is opening 100% of the buttons because this hand is so garbage that if this is in button open range, then the button open range is close to 100%, maybe 90, 95. Uh, which is fine as long as it's working in PLO5. I'm not sure if you should open that much against all the unknowns. When tight once, 100% opening range is fine, but as we don't have any information on the opponent, not sure if you should open all the crappiest ones. Um, I don't know why Hero doesn't see but the flop. Like, this is the problem when not see betting. Or was there a C bet? It's below five. No, there isn't. So here decides to check, which means that opponent can bet this turn with any hand. If I was the opponent, I would bet the turn with almost all my air. Because it's so unlike that Hero has even a king when he doesn't see bet. And now Hero just folds the king. So on the flop, you create the situation where your opponent can bluff you and you actually have something on the board. So just see bet. People don't raise as bluffs so often that you should be worried about. Uh, on the right, fold when you have ace in your hand. Uh, on the left, once again, you can see, but people call with flush draws, you can bet for value. People call with check, you can bet for value. And now opponent raises. Might be bluffed, might be not. On the right, crappy pocket checks, I would just fold on the button. You have to fold so many flops that you can just save up the money. Ace is on the right, uh, I mean on the left. Aces are always interesting. Um, why doesn't Hero bet the pot from the UTG? Uh, I don't know any reason. The reason why we change our bet sizing is that we want to balance our ranges. And from UTG, our range should be only for value, really strong range, no reason to bet smaller. No one is going to exploit our weak range with big bet sizing because we don't have a weak range from UTG. So always bet from UTG. That's where your range is the strongest. Uh, on the left, I would have just folded the flop. Um, ace, ace, check for only back to a flush draw. Thing is that when opponent bets the flop, he has something, and against something, you hope you are even flipping, and you might be just totally crushed. People don't dunk with air that often. And the thing is that when you just crawl, when he fires turn, you have to give up, unless it's a spade. King of spades is after an ace the best card in the deck so hero got pretty lucky here because now if opponent has queen six or something he might check because he's afraid now he bets um here hero decides to raise against min bet that's good top pair and wrap definitely race material and um, here he decides to call and now the river kind of have to fall and that passive line and calling with medium strength hands only to give up on the third river is just wasting money. I'm here on the right hero almost made a bet but decided to check raise. I would have bet myself instead of trying to induce a bluff because if opponent has weaker ace he's just going to check back. So there's a tendency for Madisco that 
he plays a passive line with medium strength hand that is not going to improve. Here on the right, 3-bet is fine, calling is fine, hand has a lot of multi-way potential, so you can get much more value by calling and creating 3 or 4-way pot, where you can dominate your opponents a lot. But 3 bidding is also fine. Hand is pretty strong. I'm just saying that when you have ace high rundown with two did ace, you don't have to 3 bet it. Sometimes the hand works really well in multi way pots. Because it has a lot of nut potential. But queen jack then 9, this is a 3 bet hand. This hand doesn't work that well in multi way pots, but is awesome in heads up pots. And here. On the left, C bet, we trap the pot. On the right, I would check raise. Oh, opponent dunks. That is really strange bet. I would have fallen in on the right. I mean, on the left. Somehow, left and right is really hard for me. And on the right, check call on the river. Did hero check raise the flop? I think hero, yeah, check call. Oh dear. Uh, definitely you can check raise. Over pair, open in the flush draw. The passive line, the problem is that on the turn, you sort of turn your queens into a bluff catcher and it's really vulnerable if you don't hit the flush or your straight. On the river, definitely check call. And open and hand, just higher flush draw and weaker cut shot. On the left, he rolls up the nuts and bet's really big. Now, this bet sizing isn't balanced, but it's below 5, it shouldn't be balanced. Now when opponent calls the flop, he has a hand he likes, now you can pay like 65 or even 70 cents. Get few BBs more as value. And then some crappy hands, probably open from the button, no, someone opens a phone. Here on the right, it's kind of a situation that a clean hunt would be a quite nice to know what kind of opponent we have. Is he the tight aggressive, loose aggressive, loose passive or tight passive? In certain opponents we can call with almost any hand on blind versus blind because we have position and we can just make him fold. Same reason why hero shouldn't open 100% of his small blinds. On the right, hero cut into a big pot with really medium strength hand and flops bottom to one of those nasty situations that you will have in PLO, but I will take a passive line if no, no one should be bluffing here a lot unless they have the flush or even straight. So just make the full house on the river and now get value. Now bet sizing is important, I would pay like $1.2, slightly above half. And I don't know what the opponent had, but it's one of those situations that people are going to call with flushes or straights, and he had a straight and he would call $1.2 because he looked so bluffy on the river. Of course, he also didn't have a bluffing range there away but um, here ace queen nine then rainbow uh, just fold pre-flop worst position hand isn't going to flop anything super strong it's going to be four way pot it's really bad position and situation so just give up so those pre-flop calls where you spend two or three bbs and then just give up on most of the flops or you hit something and there's reversed in blind odds. Those two and three BBs actually pile up. Here on the raw left, I don't know why hero doesn't see, but the flop. 
Once a client A says seven, just see that may pop the phone. Now you check, which means that opponent bets, and hero decides to go for check raise. Now this is kind of strange line. If I was the opponent, I would be pretty heavily thinking that should hero ever have an ace. The only hand that could play that way is quads, but why raise the turn anyway? So if he has any pocket where Broadway pocket where I think opponent should call there. So no reason to be tricky, just see but the flop and opponents will fold so often when they don't have an ace. And here, I don't know why Hero even thinks about shoving. Because it's clear that opponent should have aces. Code 4, but... No, 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 this is not good. You fill it in with 35 to 40% odds. So just call the flop and see if you hit any piece of it. No reason to shove free flop. Because the thing is that... Opponent is not going to fold on any flop. He's going to stack off on any flop. But if the flop is, let's say, 7-7-7, seven, 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 then you can happily fold your ace high. And if you can fold even one flop where your opponent cannot, then calling gives you better value than just chopping pre-flop. On the left, the yes, see you at the turn. And now on the river, it's between check calling and check folding. And the thing is that Hero didn't even think about calling. What is the opponent range? So, of course, we have a double speed on the playback. But even then, Marisco made really, really quick decisions. Okay, I have an ace, I see, but flop on the turn. I have ace and open I see, but oh, river complete a flush, I check fold. I don't know, did you ever stop to think, what do my opponent have? What is his range? But yeah, when opponent bets spot on the river, it looks like a flush. And it is a fold, but what if opponent bets half a punt? Is it still an easy snap fold, or where is the borderline when hero should be thinking about bluff catching? Of course, now we don't know what Madrisco is thinking, we don't have any idea how much he's thinking about opening ranges. And on the left, one of the situations, if the board is scary for you, it is scary for opening. And now, when you bet, opponent should fold a lot of hands. He might call, okay, happens, but at least you have a chance to win the pot. You even have the cut shot. But when you check, now opponent is going to bet and he bets one third of the pot. So now when you check, you create a really nasty situation. If you check call, your hand is not going to improve often. You're out of position. And if you check raise, it's really weird. Of course, hero is super lucky once again and hits the top set and makes the full house and no reason to put bet smaller. Can call from ace or smaller full house the full house is going to call a pot but if he has just an ace then no reason to put it so think about his calling range and the wider it is the smaller your bed sizing should be but we have now what over 20 minutes of playing time there's one clear thing that Marisco can do to improve his win rate and improve his gameplay is don't take passive lines especially out of position in head support so there's a lot of head supports where a hero could have won the pot by c betting or create a lot of fun in equity for the turn but instead he check calls or tips back and open and stabs the turn and hero just gives up. So instead of giving up, try to win the bot. Definitely you should go back to the video about C betting in heads up bots and watch it again. 
I'm here on the left. If the opponent is 100 BPs, I think calling is fine, but now when the opponent is like 50 BPs deep, then just 3 betting is fine, and now shove the turn. Still to do sense. And he has two pairs. Oh, he has a straight. Sorry. Happens. Another thing that hero should be thinking is do you have to open all of your small blinds against big blind? I don't know if the hands import to poker tracker, uh, holding manager, what he's using, but if they do, go and see how often opponent folds preflop on average when you open from the small blind. And is that enough? Because I have a feeling that in PLO5, on average, people are not folding a lot of pit blinds when you open from the small blind. Tight ones will do, that's where the heart is so nice, you can see easily that, okay, VP, IP 15, let's open any four. They will fold pre-flop or on the flop often enough. Average opponent doesn't float, doesn't bluff much. So you can open a lot from small blind, but let's say open with 50 or 40% range. Don't make it 100 or 80. Just open with the good hands. And hands that have potential to hit so hard that you can start value betting. And what what happened here on the right? Hero called pre-flop, two pairs on the flop. The problem in check raising is that there's an A, so hero check calls. And on the turn, he checks and now bets the river. Now once again, is this a bluff or is this a value? What better hands opening is going to fold? He's not going to fold a flush, he's not going to fold a straight. And after turn check, I doubt that he's going to fold a4, a7 often enough compared to times he actually have a hand. And no worse hand he's going to call. He's not going to call with 4-7 or 4-5. So I, I don't like this bet. Uh, I would much rather check call the river because when opponent checks the turn, I don't think he has a flush, but when hero checks turn and river, opponent might think that hero doesn't have a flush, so he's going to bet. The thing is that he's probably not going to bet any two pairs, a7, and probably not going to bet his straight. So when the opponent has a flush, it doesn't matter if hero bets or check calls, he's going to lose the same amount of money, or one bet. But by check calling, you give your opponent the chance to make a bluff with missed hand. So instead of betting check call, and opponent had better two pairs, and he had a flush. Uh, here, opponent bets, uh, I would have just called. It's a rainbow board, no reason to protect the hand. And it's really hard to get value from ace, xxx. Call, give opponent chance to re-bluff the turn or hit two pairs with ace, and then get value. If there was a flush draw on the board, then definitely raise for protection, but now on the rainbow board. And now, bet, represent the flush. Huge phone inequity. And let's see if we can get something going on. There's like two minutes left in the video. Some nice last hand action on the left c but the flop make your life easier if you don't hit the flush then it's really hard because when you just check call or just call with the flush draw it's really hard to make it profitable because your hand looks like exactly what you have and you often need implied odds so no reason to be so passive Definitely watch the video about C betting in head supports and concentrate on thinking why betting is better than check calling. 
when we think about turn and river situations. Because now there are many pots where hero just gives up on a pot that could have been won. What happened here on the left? Why the pot is so big when hero doesn't really have anything? Um, this is one of those. <laughs> Uh, this happened earlier that hero decides to make a bluff that is not going to be a good one. It's a limp spot. An opponent pet spot on the flop. In a limp spot. Why? Well, first answer, because he has an ace. And when his range is really, really ace heavy, hero decides to check race. Now, Yes, hero represent ace, but a lot of hands that has ace, hero would open pre-flop already. And here, hero is risking 45 cents to win 24. So the risk and reward ratio is really, really crappy. Now, hero has to be right like 66% of the time. So two out of three times opponent has to fold. And when his range is so ace heavy, this bluff is just just pure bad and of course opponent calls and now we can be pretty sure he has an ace don't don't make another mistake on the turn or river and he had an ace of course when someone pots in a limp spot it's always a hand it's never a bluff if they bluff the bet size would be smaller Of course, now someone starts to pot as a bluff, because I tell you and tell everyone that it isn't bluff. But there on ace ace check board, when someone pots in a limp spot, it's really likely that it's an ace. And some final hands before we end the session. And we didn't have anything. So there we are. Um, thank you for watching this. It was a nice session because there were some tendencies that should be fixed. Checking back in a heads up pot without a good reason, especially when we don't have a heart, we don't often have a reason to check back. We often check back because we don't want the opponent to check raise us, but when we don't have a heart, we have no idea how often the opponent check raises us. Now, Hero didn't make any notes, didn't put any color codings, didn't even watch what the opponent had in some of the hands. That's definitely one thing that should be fixed also. If you are not using HUD, or even if you are using HUD, make notes. Notes eat more money. If you have a one note that opponent can raise on paired board as a bluff, that one note can make you a lot of money. Or you have a note that opponent doesn't fold set when the flush completes on the river. That one note means a lot of BBs for value, because then you know that if you hit the flush, you have implied odds and you can bet big on the river. But here I didn't make any notes. Color coding, one of the best things that Poker Stars has compared to other sites, use color codings when you have nodes. Especially when you have hot color coding just makes it so much better to play on the tables. You can easily spot certain types of opponents. So, out of this session, one, go and watch C betting in heads up bots and really concentrate what is the general idea of that video. And second one, Think about how much you want to actually open from the small blind against unknown opponents. You shouldn't be opening 100%. It doesn't work. Like yourself, if someone opens from the small blind, you're called with wide, wide range with the pocket nines in one hand. So if you are calling widely on the big blind, 
and then attacking post flop in position why wouldn't the opponent do the same all right that's 40 minutes of plo action thank you for watching hope you learned something there's definitely money to be made in plo5 but as the rate is so high you have to use your opportunities bet sizing to create extra bbs for value and just giving up pre-flop or flop in situations where you have to give up later anyway to save up few bbs saved money is one money and if you can value bet one bb more it's one bb more for your winnings and win rate so this was made by everybody for pokerbi.com and hope to see you next time in piano videos have a nice day and bye bye